let's take a step back in time to year 1898. Why? Well, you'll see. It's fascinating. Imagine this. You have a bar of gold. Exciting, isn't it? Or think about the graphite in your pencil. Both are great examples for this. Now picture this. We start cutting this gold bar into smaller and smaller pieces. First we cut into half, then we cut the half into another half and we keep going. Eventually, we'll reach a point where we have a single particle of gold that cannot be further divided. This is the smallest particle of gold or the smallest unit of gold and it is uncuttable further. Now let's consider our graphite here. As you may know, graphite is an, just another form of carbon. If we start cutting it in the same way, piece by piece, eventually we'll reach a single particle of carbon again. Just like gold, this particle is the smallest particle of carbon and it is again uncuttable. What's fascinating is that these particles of both gold and carbon are so tiny that you cannot see them with naked eye. Even a regular microscope won't help. To view such particles, you need a special instrument called electron microscope about which you will study later. So what are these tiny, uncuttable, invisible particles called? They are called atoms. Now, if we think about it in reverse, these atoms, the smallest particles of matter, combine together to form objects we see. The gold bar holds countless gold atoms joined together. Similarly, graphite in your pencil is formed by many carbon atoms arranging themselves in a specific way. Alright, now let's stay in the year 1898 for a moment. And in this year, I could have confidently said that the atom is un. Now comes the year 1899. A scientist named J.J. Thompson made a groundbreaking discovery that changed everything that we knew about carbon until then. Sorry, atom until then. The discovery shattered the belief that atoms were indivisible or uncuttable. He discovered a particle which is smaller than atom called an electron and it turned out that atoms themselves are made up of smaller particles called electrons, neutrons and protons about which again you will study in higher classes. It is fair or I would say it is very good approximation to say that the smallest particle of matter is atom and this approximation is good enough for us to understand many of the scientific phenomena or chemical phenomena that is happening around us. Let's take an example of oxygen atom. All right, two oxygen atoms I have here. When oxygen is in gaseous state, a single oxygen atom like these cannot exist independently. Instead, it combines chemically and forms a pair of atoms. These two atoms of oxygen stick together like a couple forming what we call an oxygen molecule. Similarly, hydrogen atom, another gas, let's say two hydrogen atoms combine together chemically and forms hydrogen molecule. So what are molecules? Molecules are formed when two or more atoms combine chemically. This could be atoms of same kind like oxygen, oxygen or hydrogen, hydrogen, which are still elements because they are made up of same type of atom. But here is where it gets interesting. It's not just atoms of same kind that combine. Uh, for example, let's take one uh, hydrogen atom actually hydrogen molecule and when they chemically combine with oxygen atom that is two hydrogen atom here as a molecule is combining with a different atom that is chemically combining with oxygen uh, we get a new molecule that is water the new substance is no longer an element and this is a water molecule the smallest unit of this compound water 
molecules of elements are formed when atoms of similar kind combine and molecules of compounds are formed when atoms of different element combine so to summarize what we have learned in this video an atom is the smallest unit of matter that is uncuttable or indivisible atoms combine to form elements for example as you see here individual gold atoms come together to form a gold bar when two or more atoms combine chemically they form a molecule for example two oxygen atoms combine chemically to form an oxygen molecule similarly two hydrogen atoms combine to form hydrogen molecule and this hydrogen molecule then combines chemically with oxygen atom to form a new substance a completely new substance that is water and what you see here is one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atom chemically combine together and this is a water molecule and that's the story of atoms and molecules